All right, welcome back to another one of our film reviews. Today we are talking about Bears' new center, Coleman Shelton. We're going to break down his film when he was with the Los Angeles Rams to show exactly what he brings to the Chicago Bears. Got a great set of cut-ups for you guys today. As always, if you appreciate this content, give us a like. Give us any comments with any feedback you might have. But without further ado, let's jump right into the film. All right, we're going to open up with a running play. There is Shelton right there, of course, at the center position. We're going to get motion from the receiver across the formation here. This is going to be a standard kind of zone run blocking scheme that the Rams have used. Basically, every NFL team uses this scheme here. You're going to get the receiver on the edge of your screen blocking the safety. The right tackle is going to work on the uh, right defensive end right there. And you're going to get kind of a zone double team here with the guard working up to number 20 for New Orleans. There he is right there. And Shelton trying to take over right here and get some movement on that defensive lineman. We call this defensive lineman right here a two-eye technique because he's on the inside shoulder of the guard right there. If he was on the outside shoulder of Shelton, we call him a one technique. This is a wider path, obviously, for the center and a tough block. On the backside, we're just going to get backside cutoffs with a scoop technique. The left guard's going to work through here and trying to get to number 56 for New Orleans, and the tackle's going to try and cut off the defensive tackle lined up right there. And the big thing here, the key block is on Shelton. He's got to take him over and get movement in this direction to give his running back a chance. Let's check out how he does. There's the motion. There's the snap. Look at him get on him right away and get that great movement. Let's go back to the very beginning here. Look how he covers up 99 and keeps working north and south and drives him off the football. Look at that displacement. Right. Look at where he starts right there. Look at his feet. Number 99's feet. Turn back one, two, three, four yards and horizontal movement as well. Look at all of this space inside. This is what you're looking for at a double team. This is a wide path to go. See how he gets his foot in the ground and almost turns his shoulders completely 90 degrees right there. That's athleticism. That's footwork. That wins you games at the center position in the National Football League. Gets on him just enough to allow the guard to come off and pick up number 20. Look at this, this location in the defense, right? You can see right here how fast and downhill 56 has to fly. And because he has to fly so fast downhill, the running back has a lot of grass to cut back behind, and it becomes a really nice run. It all starts on the play side with Shelton. If number 99 gets penetration or if Shelton can't get movement, and this becomes just a quagmire right here, this play's dead in the water. Look at the running back's path. He attacks Coleman Shelton and then finds a cutback angle. But it all starts because Shelton gets movement, right? Shelton gets the movement, running back can get depth, and then cut back. These are the plays that the Bears missed last year at their center position, but they'll make these kind of plays with Shelton taking over the job in 2024. Yeah, Nick, and when we first start to talk about Shelton, you talk about the run blocking game. That is where he absolutely shines. He's done great in the run blocking game. I think that's the biggest upgrade over Lucas Patrick that Shelton brings. 72.6 run blocking grade for Shelton, a 61.6 run blocking game for Patrick. And you know, Patrick, he had four games under a 50 PFF grade last year in the run blocking department, where Shelton, on the other hand, only had one. Shelton had nine games in the green, which is 63 or above in the run blocking grades, where Patrick only had three games in the green. I think Shelton is a clear-cut upgrade in the run blocking department, and I think the Bears are going to love this move. All right, here we go. Sticking with the exact same play, exact same concept, we are going to go in the other direction now. There is Shelton, of course, at the center position, and it's going to be the same kind of concept. You're going to get the tackle working up this direction. You're going to get his own double team here on the play side working up to the linebacker. You're going to get backside cutoffs here with a scoop technique from the left guard, cutting off the defensive tackle right there for number 77. Everyone else working backside cutoff there. Receiver coming in motion here to get the defense to influence this direction. But once again, it's going to be on this block right here. These two guys have to take care of these two guys. And while the first play was a perfect rep from Coleman Shelton, this wasn't perfect. But I want you guys to watch what he still is able to do here. This is really important. This is the NFL. Not every play is going to go right. But Shelton still does a great job getting movement, this time horizontally, to allow his running back to cut back behind him. Let's check it out. All right, there's the motion. You can see there, once again, everyone's zoning to the right. You can see everyone working backside cutoffs there. You can see 73 working to the backside linebacker. You can see right tackle working out right there. Same play as before, just going the other direction on your screen. But this is not as good of double team up here. Watch the right guard, Dotson, right here. He kind of just jumps around a little bit. That's kind of a weak step here from 69. Leaves uh, the center right there completely hung out to dry. Watch what Shelton's able to do. 
He's able to keep working and driving his feet. Here's the important thing you have to do in this situation. If you're a center and you're kind of hung out to dry on this kind of block, you've got to work to keep squaring up that defensive uh, defensive tackle and making sure he doesn't get ability to get deep penetration. Because right here, you're screwed, right? Nine times out of 10, what you see happens with centers, and we, everyone who's watched the game on Sunday, you see this, gets blown back into the running back and becomes a big-time negative play. This is a really bad double-team help from the right guard. But Sheldon keeps fighting. He works, square him up. See how he keeps working to square him up right there? He doesn't give the defensive tackle any sort of chance at penetration. And right here, that defensive tackle scared to death. He's going to be reached. So he actually runs himself out of the play, and Coleman Sheldon's happy to escort him away from it. This is a great rep here, guys. Again, 69, really bad help on the double team. Shelton completely hung out to dry, but he keeps working, keeps driving, and gives his offense a chance. All right, switching up with some pass protection here and there, of course, is Shelton right there going away from us at the center position. So on the right side of the offensive line, it looks like they're running a gap scheme. The right tackle is going to work out this way. Guard's going to work out this way, and the center's going to work out to the right. And each one of these three guys has these three gaps. On the back side, it's one-on-one. -on -one. So right here, Coleman Shelton, he's expecting either blitz this way or defensive tackle to loop around this way. He's got to be ready for either or, and he's going to pick it up to make sure we're stout right in front of the quarterback, Matthew Stafford, to give him time to throw the ball down the field. Let's check out how Shelton does. All right, there's a snap. You can see number 90 flash right to him. You can see the entire offensive line on the right side of the offensive line working the gap to the right right there. You can see the backside is one-on-one, -on -one. but let's go back and watch Shelton again. Again, his eyes immediately flash to number 90 for New Orleans. He sees him coming and picks him up and just stonewalls him. That's a perfect base. That's phenomenal technique. He doesn't have either foot staggered. He's square. He's got low pad level. You see how his pads and helmet are underneath the defensive lineman. He's got his hands inside. This is a technically sound football player. That's what I love to see. But he keeps fighting, keeps driving, and just stonewalls number 90. Just embarrasses him. Allows Matthew Stafford to escape the pocket. Big play down the field. Look, when these quarterbacks and receivers make big plays down the field, it's exciting. But guess what? It only starts if you have protection up front. If your center's blown in the quarterback's lap, which as Bears fans, you've seen a lot of, unfortunately, over the past couple of seasons, this play never happens, right? If number 90 drives 65 right here, Matthew Stafford can't escape. And guess what? This big play doesn't occur. But Shelton does a phenomenal job, totally dominates this rep, and Matthew Stafford is able to create the big play. Sometimes the big plays don't just happen because the quarterbacks are playing well and because the receivers are playing well. A lot of times it's because the offensive lineman does a great rep, and this is a perfect example of that. Yeah, Nick, and I said that Shelton's you know biggest attribute over Patrick was in the run blocking game, and I'd say that's his best attribute overall. But in the pass blocking game, he is much less terrible than Patrick was. If you look at Lucas Patrick's pass blocking grades at the center position last year, he had 10 grades under that 50 mark, and he had about five grades that were in the red, which is a 30 or below pass blocking grade per PFF. Patrick was an absolute liability in the pass blocking department, let up 28 pressures last year, just overall. And we say that, but he didn't let up any sacks, but Justin Fields able to scramble out of a lot of sacks. Patrick just overall really wasn't a great asset in the pass blocking department. Shelton, much better. He's not excellent at pass blocking. I don't think he's, you know, the greatest pass blocker in the world. What we're talking about is he's not terrible. He gives you a serviceable upgrade in the pass blocking department, and he's much better than Patrick was last season. All right, we're going to stick with the pass protection here. Look, sometimes in the NFL, players screw up. They make mental mistakes. And on this pass protection, I don't know exactly what's supposed to be happening. I'm thinking it's supposed to be a slide protection to the left right here. The previous play was a slide to the right, this being a slide to the left. And then sort of man-on-man -on, -man on the backside right here between those two and these two. But it's kind of weird up front. I don't think this is by design. The Rams have... Four offensive sl linemen slide to the left, right tackle one-on-one -on, -one on the backside, and it creates a lot of confusion inside right here, and there's a lot of pressure on the quarterback. But I want everyone to focus on Shelton right here. In the middle of all this chaos, he does a really smart, savvy play to give his quarterback a chance. Let's check it out. All right, you can see the snap. You can see four offensive linemen slide to the left. I don't know what Steve Avila, the, the Rams rookie left guard, is doing here. He should just kind of stay in his gap. But you can see all this convolution right here going on. It's just a big old mess. You can see right here, Saints defender falls down, picked up right here, coming around. But he beats the Rams right guard. But look at Shelton. Peel back and get just enough a piece of him to allow Stafford to escape the pocket and complete the third down ball, move the chains. 
These are the little plays. Again, is this a grading win on PFF, for example, for Coleman Shell? No, it's not. They probably grade this as a bad rep, right? Don't know exactly what he's supposed to do here. Is he supposed to pick up number 90? Was he supposed to initially pick up the stunning defensive lineman? Potentially. But I do love he recognizes, okay, right now I'm guarding grass. I see a threat. I got to help my guy out. And he does. Is it a pancake block? Is it a highlight play? No, of course not. But it's giving your team a chance. I felt like the Bears over the past few seasons, a lot of their issues, especially on the interior of the offensive line, they weren't giving themselves a chance. Here, this next level effort, this next level recognition, recognizing and reacting, as I always like to say, from Coleman Shelton, gives Matthew Stafford a chance, and that chance is rewarded with a big-time first down there. Again, these plays don't show up on the highlight realm, highlight film, excuse me, but I tell you what, it can be the difference between winning and losing. All right, going back to the running game, there is Coleman Shelton right there, of course, at the center position. And this is kind of a cool adjustment to the earlier running play that the Rams have run in this film set. So we're going to get the wide receiver in motion again this way. We're going to get zone scheme everybody this way, like you've seen before. Backside cutoff blocks on the backside. And before, what would happen is the wide receiver would work up and pick up the safety. Here, what the Rams are doing is the exact same scheme. They're, they're bringing the motion man across here, but they're going to have the backside receiver insert this direction. It's going to be a design cutback right here for the running back. Again, the whole point here is to try and get these guys overflowing to the motion to the zone and then get the receiver to basically be a fullback leading this way for the running back to cut behind. It's a really smart, clever strategy, great in-game adjustment. But in order for it to work, you need to have bully ball at the point of attack right here. This is going to be a double team once again, but Shelton's going to have to do a heck of a job. He can't allow any penetration this way. He's got to get vertical movement this direction to give his running back a chance to cut back behind his leading receiver block, Cooper Cup. Let's check out how Shelton does. Uh, there's the motion. You can see Cooper Cup, the receiver over here to the right. He's going to come across the formation and be like the fullback in the hole. And now watch what Shelton does here. This is beautiful stuff. He squares him up right there. And at this point, it's all about drive, being physical and competitive, right? Technically, he's in good place. His feet right now, they're kind of over, they're crossed over each other, but that's going to happen in these kind of run blocks. Not a lot of great help on the double team either. But at this point, it's being a tougher individual and playing downright bully ball. And this is what I love about Shelton. Look at him and drive him, work him downfield, and keep harassing him. That is great stuff here. It gives your running back a chance. Watch how long 23, the running back, gets to just sit in this hole and hug and look for an opportunity. At this point, the, uh, the New Orleans Saints put more people in the box than the Rams could block. Not enough people uh, followed the motion as, as Sean McVay, the offensive coordinator for the Rams, likely would have thought would have happened. So this doesn't end up being a huge play. But if you look at what Shelton does, gets on him, drives, allows the running back to hug that really tight. Look at that movement, folks. Again, line of scrimmage right there. You can see where it started. He gets driven back two, three, three and a half, almost four yards before it's all said and done. That's not supposed to happen for an interior defensive lineman one-on-one -on -one in the center. You almost never see that happen. This is a great rep from Coleman Shelton, and this kind of physical, aggressive, nasty football is exactly what he'll bring to the Chicago Bears. Yeah, Nick, the one thing that happens sometimes when a player is very physical is penalties, and that can really kill a drive. Coleman Shelton, no stranger to getting some penalties last season. It's going to happen when you're that physical of a player. He had six penalties, one was waved off, so five penalties last season. But when we look at what Lucas Patrick brought to the table, he had 11 penalties last season. So substantial, almost half as many penalties for a guy like Shelton, getting an upgrade in that department as far as smart football play. I think this is looking better and better as we analyze this more and more for the Bears. All right, we've got another running play for you. That's in on a big time win for Coleman Shelton. There he is right there underneath the goal post at the center position, of course. And it's going to be the standard Rams zone scheme we've seen a lot of today. Left tackle work in that direction. Double team here up to the linebacker. Shelton working to take him over. Backside scoop techniques on the backside. Cut off blocks the rest of the way. we got the wide receiver coming in motion across the formation this way. And the running back is taking this path here and trying to cut back right behind here and try and break this one into a touchdown to clinch the win for the Los Angeles Rams. Let's watch once again what Coleman Shelton does here. And again, the New Orleans Saints know this is coming. This is the final minutes of the fourth quarter. The Rams have run this play over and over and over again. They know exactly what to expect here. 99 knows exactly what's coming. Let's watch what Coleman Shelton does just through effort and one-two and solid technique to give his team a big-time win. There's the motion. There's the snap. You can see the double team. And right here is where it's so important. Let me go forward a little bit. Right here, Coleman Shelton, by being such a great athlete, has number 99 completely reached. This is 
a death sentence for a defensive lineman. You cannot get reached. This could be the end of your career getting reached like this because you can see a big hole opening up this way. So what does number 99 force to do? He has to keep working horizontally to make sure he doesn't get reached or at least fight against it. And when that happens, the hole, the cutback direction here gets widened. Again, let's go back to the very beginning, right? Shelton gets on him, reaches him. Watch that get hole get wind right there, right? 99 is keep working. He's pressing. He's trying to stay flat. And then the cutback lane opens up and it's a lane to the end zone. That's how you run the football in the National Football League, right? It's not pancake blocks. It's not driving people 30 yards off the football. It's getting bodies on bodies. It's reaching defensive linemen, threatening them to get reached, and then staying on them. Right here, number 99, he can't play off this and make the attack. All he can do is just try and push back against Sheldon and work horizontally to try and prevent being reached. When he does that right there, you can see the cutback lane naturally opens up, and the running back takes it for a touchdown. Right, right here. That's it. That's how you drop running the football in the National Football League. None of these blocks are pancake blocks. In fact, the only reason this play works at all is because Shelton right here is able to reach that defensive lineman, compress the, or uh, dislocate him a little bit. He has to force to press back against him. The rest of these defensive linemen run to close that gap, and then the cutback lane opens up, right? It's this simple to run the football. doesn't mean it's easy, but it's this simple. And it starts with having a quality center up front like Coleman Shelton. I think the Bears running game over the past few years has been solid. But with the improved addition with a guy like Shelton into the fold, they'll be a whole lot better. Yeah, Nick. And one last thing we can go over when referring to what can bring added value out of a player. And that is ability to not have injuries. When you look at Lucas Patrick's injury history going back, from 2018, he's had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine injuries that have kept him out of games at time. Where in Coleman Shelton, he has only had one serious injury. That was back in 2022, high ankle sprain. It kept him out for a couple of weeks. So I think Coleman Shelton, he's a warrior. He's a Iron Man type of player. He played over 1,100 snaps last season for the Rams. This is a guy that is full of consistency and has a great injury history as far as bringing a guy that is valuable and reliable to the Bears.